Right, we're kicking things off at the third hole at Bankery. I've not played it yet, it looks a stunning little par three. I'm joined by Hector, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about golf as a whole in Aberdeenshire, really. You've got quite a number of courses um, for people to play. Yeah, we've got 55 courses, Andy, within an hour radius of the city. All right, okay. Which is quite a high is, concentration. Yeah. Uh, some of the best uh, Lynx courses on the planet. We've got Royal Aberdeen, which is the sixth oldest in the world, yeah. and Fraserburgh, which is the seventh seven, oldest. Yeah. And we've also got uh, Peterhead, which is uh, in the top 30 oldest courses in the world, just north of Aberdeen. So and so of course Fraserburgh, which I believe you're going to... I'll be there tomorrow, tomorrow. yeah. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. uh, it's the it's seventh oldest course right. in the world. There's a lot so of history around here we've as We've got well. lots of courses, top designers, old Tom Morris designed Cruden Bay. Yes. We've got James Braid courses, Merker Links right next door to Royal Aberdeen. Some real quality. And we've got Alistair McKenzie who designed Augusta, who's designed yeah, yeah. a course right in the city centre called Hazel Hazelhead. We're here at uh, Bankery this morning, parking course, yep. running along the River Dee. Yep. I believe we've got some a little bit of footage going over for you now, this par three that we're going to play and Lovely River Dee runs parallel quite a few it holes. It does, it? yeah. River Dee, famous salmon fishing river. Mm. We get people from all over the world coming to fish for trout and salmon in the river just behind us here yeah and of course this is where Paul Laurie learned his trade yeah yeah Paul was a young assistant here yeah uh, before he went on to win the Open of yeah. course but this is my home club gorgeous setting yeah lovely to play any time of year yeah well it's a beautiful morning it's uh, it's a little bit chilly we started off at uh, just past eight o'clock and uh, we're looking forward to uh, finding out a little bit more about Bankery and Good. we'll uh, talk about something a little bit uh, about the hotel we're staying. You've got an interesting story I do. which you can uh, tell us about shortly. I'd love to share that with you. Well, first of all, I better try and get a better shot because I've been garbage so far. We've got a par three to try and find. <laughs> well, not quite the birdie, but uh, to be honest, it was a struggle to make the par. We're away, it's a gorgeous morning. I can't wait to see what this place has got to offer. You never quite know uh, what to expect three holes in, but I've got a funny feeling this is gonna be a decent park on course from what I've seen so far, and uh, we shall see. So our accommodation this week uh, is, is pretty special. We arrived last night. There's a lot of story and history behind that as well, isn't it? A lot of history. There's a lot of history in the area. Yeah. Uh, the hotel you stayed in last night, Mary Cooter House, uh, the original part of the building dates from 1225. Yeah. And it was a home base for the Knights Templars. Yeah. And the Knights Templars, I don't know if you managed to see the Great Hall. Yes, we did this morning, where yeah. They, where they lived and, and stayed in, and which is now the wine cellar and beer cellar downstairs is where they slept right and they reckon that there's secret escape passageways to the river and the old churchyard because again we're just literally yards from the river yeah, so there was an underground the or something to the, there, to the river there was yeah lots of history to yeah, explore yeah. Uh, it's a shame you don't have more time because i ah, could yeah. tell you lots more about it oh. but, but great food great accommodation Right, par three seems to be a bit of a feature and uh, each one we've come across so far have been really really nice to look at and to play uh, but visually, like I said, stunning. And we've got another one coming up, which it's a shame, really. We're here in uh, sort of mid-September, and uh, the back of this green is uh, normally covered in pink rhododendrons, which has got that kind of whole Augusta feel, I'm told. And that's a feature throughout the course that we're obviously not seeing, unfortunately, at this time of year. But still a great par three. Um, you can see from that drone footage, there's a little question of a burn that runs directly in front of, uh, of the green. So not easy, it's playing around 160. And uh, we'll have a bit of a challenge going on. The club is right, that should feed in. Oh, it's not right, it's in the burn. That looks so good in the air. And uh, I've stuck it straight into um, that burn I mentioned. I should have kept quiet about that. 
I was feeling so cocky when that ball was in the air. It looked so like it was going to feed in off the camber. We watched someone earlier, and anything between the bunker and the flag is the perfect landing area because there's a bit of a slope that feeds in off there. But anyway, you'll have to take my word for that. Well, I still can't believe that I managed to find a burn that is literally at this point just uh, a couple of feet wide, but there you go. Nearly made what would have been uh, a miraculous three uh, for a minute there. I thought I'd got it. But I think, well, I'm pretty confident that I can hold this one. And, uh, yeah, getting away with a, a four with that drop is, uh, is good enough. But I'd love to see this in the summer with the rhododendrons out in full bloom. And uh, Bankery have got their own little uh, taste of Augusta here. Stunning par three. Stunning is the word I've used quite often. It was an incredibly relaxing round of golf. The flow of the river, the trees, the wildlife, and the colours of the landscape, they just created what was an idyllic backdrop. It really was everything I love about a game of golf. It's just a shame those trees get in the way sometimes. Right, another great uh, par three with that, um, well, a house for doves. So we're looking at just a, a short par three, but another one that's a uh, big change in elevation. I'm not sure how much club we need to go up to get it there. Is that too much club? It's on the left hand side. I pulled it a little bit, but hopefully that's on the left-hand side of the green. You'll know better than me with that camera we've got placed up there. I haven't mentioned uh, the condition of the course, but I think hopefully, I, I always think if we do half a decent job in terms of filming this place, it should speak for itself. And it's been, it's immaculate, as you can see. In terms of definition, you can see it's sort of uh, fantastic on fairways. Clearly got your identified fairway, first cut, second cut into the rough, and again, fringes around the greens. And the greens themselves have been, A, run incredibly true and flat, but you've got plenty of pace in them. And again, I reference that point was sort of, uh, mid late september and they're still in incredibly good condition and lots of pace in them that's my round done at bankery golf club and uh, it was nice to play with with a lot of the scottish golf courses you always tend to associate the links courses but there's also an abundance of great parkland courses and in this case i would put it in that category in terms of great parkland course it was a very enjoyable and a lot of fun this morning i think it's i think it's fairly generous um, and after my first sort of duffed tee shot things got a little bit better um, but it lets you enjoy the game, some big green complexes, and again, I've already said the condition of the course was absolutely superb. Fantastic. Another night back in that hotel, and then uh, we're off for another episode at Fraserburgh.